it might be impossible with you. It may look impossible with you. It may seem hard with you. But what seems impossible to you is very much possible with God. There are some persons who only see the impossible. We are living in a time right now where persons only see the impossible. The Bible says in the book of Numbers chapter 13 and reading from verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, Send thou men that they may search the land of Canaan which I have given unto the children of Israel. Somebody say, God has given me this land. And I shall possess other lands. Somebody say, I shall possess other lands. In Jesus' name. Of every child, their father shall he send a man. Everyone a ruler amongst them. And Moses, by the commandment of the Lord, sent them from the wilderness of Paran. All those men who were heads of the children of Israel. Verse 27. And they told him and said, after they don't go and spy out the land, Moses said, as God gave him commandment, they went out to spy the land to see if the land was good. When they reached to the land, they decided that they were going to bring a report. And this is the report. Verse 27. And they told him and said, We came unto the land where the dog sent us, us, and surely it flowed with milk and honey. And this is the fruit of it. Because Moses commanded them to bring back the fruit, a fruit from the land. Verse 28. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. So he is saying, they are saying the people in the land are strong and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land in the south and the Hittites dwell and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan and Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said let us go up as one and possess it for we are we are well able to overcome it you see I, 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 I wish that we had some Caleb's in this time I wish we had some people who had faith like Caleb because even though they brought an evil report and they said listen we can't do it it is impossible Caleb heard the report and Caleb said if we go up as one but the church is too divided if the church is divided how can a church stand when it's divided how can a kingdom stand when it's divided and we say the triumphs are great we say we can't possess the land but yet the Lord says that the land is good he said I have promised you for an inheritance the land but yet you say it is impossible we are faced with situations every day in front of us we are faced with corona we are faced with the volcano we are faced with all sorts of sicknesses and diseases and we, there are people that are saying it is impossible for God to bring healing it is, it is impossible for God to rest to bring restoration to his people so they hide in their homes and they act like cowards on the streets and all over this world instead of governments trusting the church and trusting God they put their trust in a vaccine and the vaccine failed them hallelujah somebody give Jesus some praise verse 31 but the men that went up with him said we will we, we be 
is not able. You, you have to be careful that these people who say we can't. There are some can't Christians, they always say we can't, we can't, we can't. We can't do this, we can't do that. I'm tired of those kind of Christians. We can't do what? We be not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. Come on. And they brought up and what? An evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel saying, the land through which we have gone to search it, the land is the land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof and all the people that we saw are what? Are men of what? Great stature. And there we saw what? Somebody said, Lord, giants. I know that we are a few. But they will say, they saw what? Giants, the sons of Anna, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sights as what? Grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. So some people went up as well. And these people have only evil report to bring. They say giants in the land. And we are but grasshoppers. I want you to know that you might think that life by faith ministries is small. You may think that our congregation is small. But every giant that comes up against us shall fall. Like David when he slew Goliath. Every giant shall fall in the name of Jesus. It may seem like Corona is a giant. It may seem like COVID-19 is a giant. But I tell you this. That even though we may seem like grasshoppers, we shall use our slings and our stones and we will overcome in the name of Jesus. We shall overcome. So you have to be careful of some people. There are some persons who will see the situation and they will only bring a negative report. Like some of these news channels that you're watching, CNN and Fox News and NBC. You're watching them every day and all they're giving you is bad news. But you don't want to read the one thing, the one thing that gives you only good news. You see some people rather bad news than good news. So when people tell you that you must buckle like a coward and hide, you see, when David went to face Goliath, all his brothers were hiding, all the other soldiers were hiding, everybody went in hiding. But David said, what happened to you guys, all you scared of here? What is it impossible with you? God will make it possible to me. I shall defeat the giant. Numbers chapter 14, reading from verse 1. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel moaned against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, would God have we that we die in this land, in the land of Egypt? Or would God we had died in the will in this wilderness? Verse 3. And wherefore had the Lord brought us unto this land to fall by the sword? That our wives and our children should be prey? Where it's not better for us to return or were it not better for us to return to where to where to Egypt so they say listen God it's not better you to leave us to dead in Egypt God it's not better you to leave us to die in the wilderness but now you're telling us to go up against giants now you're telling us to go and take the land to possess the land that is flowing with milk and with honey. And everybody frightened. God, how are we going to do this? You want our children to die? 
You want the wife, our wives to die, our families to die? Just like Christians today running scared because they don't trust the word of God. I tell, I tell you, I trust the word of God 100%. The Lord began to speak to me this morning. He said, they that retreat shall be overcome. He said, they that retreat shall be overcome. There ain't no retreat, neither no surrender. No retreat, no surrender. It's either we believe God or we don't. Yes, yes, yes. Whose report choose in this day? Who, who you're going to serve? Who's God? Which God are you going to serve? Whose report? And verse 4 says, And they said one to another, Let us make a what? A captain. And let us what? Return into Egypt. So these people gather themselves together and they say, listen, we ain't going into this land. This thing that is before us is threatening, it's impossible. It can't happen, it's an impossible situation. Why are we going into it? If we go in, they're going to kill our lives. They're going to kill our children with the soul. And we are standing in a world with impossible situations right now. And they decide, we're not going, we're not going to overcome this now. We're not going to fight against any triumphs. We're going to retreat and we're going to surrender to the Egyptians. So they had a plan that they're going to make their own captain. They're going to get rid of Moses and Aaron and Joshua and Caleb and them. Forget about them. And we're going to appoint our own leader. And appoint a leader, we're going back to Egypt and beg the Egyptians to take us back in. And the verse went on to say that God came down in the midst of them and God was getting ready to kill every single one of them. God was going to kill every single one of them. In fact, they began to take up stones and pelt stones at Aaron and Moses and them. And there are some people who will pelt stones at you in this time. They say, how dare you stand up and say that you can beat COVID with Jesus. They're going to pelt stones at you. Yes. And they're going to say, how dare you yes. even enter into the church building. Yes. They're going to pelt stones at you. They're going to say, how dare you make a stance for Jesus. Yes. They're going to pelt stones at you yes. and say, where is your faith? Which kind of faith you have? Yes. They're going to pelt stones at you yes. because they see you pressing on in this time. Yes. But I promise you, like Moses and Aaron, God will come down in the midst of the congregation and He will defend you. God will defend you. God will defend you. He's the God of the impossible. Things that seem impossible. I'm going to give you some things that God did that everybody has thought was impossible. Hear what God did. A virgin birth. He caused a virgin to, to bear a child. That was impossible with men. How can a woman have a child without having sex with a man? Or artificial insemination. But this woman had a child. A virgin birth. It was impossible but God made it possible. Jesus turned water to wine. At the wedding in Canaan. Jesus turned water to wine. That was impossible at the time, but Jesus made it possible. Lepers! In those days, a leper, they, they were practicing social distancing in those days. Lepers had to stay a certain amount of feet from the people who were considered clean. There were persons who were considered clean and there were persons who were considered unclean. Yes. And they would keep distance, they would rest on the pool 
move away and the leper will come. Even if the leper is begging, he will have to beg from a distance. You see, the Bible says there is nothing new under the sun. You think that social distancing now start? You think it now start? It was way back in the days. But Jesus made the impossible possible. And Jesus held on to the leper and said, Be thou whole. Be made whole. Jesus made the leper clean. Even the ten lepers, he made them clean. He said, Go. On the way when they're going, they were made. They didn't even have to show themselves to the priest. One came back and said, Thank you. So Jesus made the impossible possible. Jesus was able to make the paralyzed to walk again. He made the impossible possible. Jesus was able to calm the storm, to tell the storm to cease. He made the impossible possible. Jesus took a 12 year old child that was dead and bring her back to life he made the impossible possible he is God of the impossible five blind men were healed by Jesus they were totally blind and Jesus made the impossible possible. But this one shocked many of them. 5,000 persons following Jesus in the wilderness. And they became hungry. And the disciples said to him, send them away before they faint. Send them away, Lord. He said, if they faint, if they go, they will dead. If they, they, they go jump down, if they go. Anybody have any food? They say there is a lad here who has some fish and some loaves of bread. What that lad doing with, with fish and bread and listening to Jesus? Mommy probably sent him out to buy fish and bread. And he saw the crowd and he started walking with the crowd, following Jesus. Everywhere Jesus went, there was a crowd. And they tell you, go come with it. And he took the fish and the loaves and fed 5,000. Another time he went, 4,000 following him. And he fed the 4,000 again. He made the impossible possible. Hallelujah. Jesus sent the disciples on in the boat and said, I will meet you on the other side. And here comes a storm. And they see a ghost. They see like a zombie walking on the water. When they behold, it was Jesus walking on water. And Peter said, Lord, can I come out there and meet you? And Jesus said, come, come, come. And then Peter start to walk and walk. I want you to know that Jesus makes all the impossible things possible. I want you to look at Peter for a moment. You see, sometimes we, if we keep our eyes on Jesus, we begin to do the things that Jesus did. If we keep our eyes on Jesus, we will walk on water like Jesus walked on water. We will feed thousands if we keep our eyes on Jesus. But Peter took his eyes off of Jesus and he put it on the storm. I want you to know that as eagles, we don't remain in the storm. We fly up above the storm. Begin to fly above the storm and keep your eyes on Jesus. No situation that you're facing right now can be an overcomer of our God. The Bible said that he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can even ask or take. God was able to speak to a burning bush and the bush was not consumed. He made the impossible possible. Just imagine a, a, a bush is on fire, but not one of the leaves on the tree is scorched. 
He made the impossible possible. Somebody give Jesus some praise. Imagine ten plagues passed through Egypt. I want you to hear this quote. Ten plagues passed through Egypt. And not one of them affected the Israelites, God's people, who was in the same land. And we are worried about plagues that are passing our way right now. God is able to cause the impossible to become possible. When we say, when we say no weapon. You see, what happens is that some people forget what's written in Psalms 91. Let's go to Psalms 91. Some people forget. Jesus was able to cause Moses, or God was able to cause Moses to part the Red Sea. When the Egyptians were coming his way, he made the impossible possible. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. Who you run into? They run into all kinds of people. Listen to me. You can run to the hospitals in this time and they won't help you. When you run to the government, they can't help you. You can run to all the officials, they can't help you. The same people that some people take bribes from to any election, listen to me. The same people that they take bribes from can't help you in this time. And by the way, the bribe money done. But I tell you, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust in Paroboshi. Let's go. Surely he shall what? Deliver me from the what? The stand from the what? And from the noisome pestilence. Somebody say pestilence can touch me. The Shabaroshi Kiba. The Shabaro. Let's go, let's go, let's go. He shall cover thee with his feathers. Come on, God is covering you. Listen to me when you do this. Stay on the stay there, stay there, stay there, stay there, stay there. In that secret place, he shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of terror by night, nor for the arrow that flyeth by day. We're getting another television, it's on its way. So it's already sent. We're gonna have another television right here, so we don't have to. I don't have to turn around. God is good. So I say, God is good. Nor for pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for destruction that waited at late noon day. Listen to me. Many persons are concerned and frightened about the volcano. If you notice, I have been saying much about it. The Bible said, "Don't be frightened. God will keep you. God will keep you." God will keep you. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Stay connected to Jesus. If you, if you are in a state where you need to repent and get close to God, get close to God. So you see, go back, go back. Let me read that verse again. Verse 6. Nor for pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for destruction that waited at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side. Stay there, stay there, stay there. So you hear, you hear thousands dying inside of America. And this other country lost hundreds. And you get frightened. The Bible tells me this. This is what the Bible says. Listen to me. So many of those churches in America were playing CC, CC Church. CC Church. They don't have no power. So some pastors, they tell the members to stay. But they don't have no power. So how can you stand if you're not in the secret place of the most side? How can you stand? A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Somebody say it shall not come nigh me. The God of the impossible. He will make everything that is impossible possible for you. When they tell you that God can't keep you, when they tell you only the mask can protect you, tell 
them, Jesus protects me. Your first level of defense should be Jesus. Your first level of defense should be Jesus. That's why the Bible says, the Bible never says put on the mask. It says put on the whole arm of God, the helmet of salvation, the shield, oh Rabashi, Kibaroshi, of faith, the sword of the state, the breastplate of righteousness. Guard the loins with you, the feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Oh, oh, Shabareti Kaba. Only with your eyes you shall thou shalt behold and see the reward of the wicked. Hey, many of you see the reward of the wicked, but you can't say nothing. Some people silent because they can't talk, because they don't take bribes. I knew that I could talk. They, I ain't owe nobody nothing, no politician. Wherever party, I ain't owe them nothing, they ain't owe me nothing. If you're not seeking Jesus, if you're not living for Jesus, then destruction will come. And listen to me, if it be any Christian that gets Corona, it doesn't matter. You are healed from it, and Jesus will heal you from it. If a Christian gets a positive result, it does not mean that God has forsaken you. It only means that God will prove to them that he is able to heal. Lazarus died so Jesus can raise him. The woman with the issue of blood, she had it so Jesus can, it can be written in the word so Jesus can heal her. The man who was by the pool was lame so Jesus can heal him. So even though you get it, it does not mean that God is not with you. Because thou hast made the Lord which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee. Come on, somebody confess this sin. Say, there shall be no evil. No evil shall befall me. Say, no evil shall befall me. Neither shall any what? Any what? Any what? Pray, come nigh my what? Somebody need to walk around your house. Somebody need to walk around your house. Somebody need to walk around your community and say, no plague shall come nigh here. You see, we have too many cowards. Although we take precautions, it does not mean that we should be cowards. Amen. Cowards like those children of Israel who say, listen, we can't go up against these people. How can we face these people? We are but grasshoppers. But Jesus said, listen to me. You're an eagle, not a grasshopper. Amen. You know what that means? It doesn't matter how tall the giant is. The eagle will always fly higher than a giant. Don't forget the name of Jesus in this time. Don't forget the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is the most powerful name. He created and declared in your household, over your children, over your family members. When they tell you to be frightened, say, I got Jesus. The songwriter say, I got Jesus, it's enough. My friend, it's enough. Is it enough for you? Hallelujah. The book of Luke chapter 18, read it from verse 27. And he said, the things which are impossible with men, and he said, Jesus speaking, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. God is still on his throne. He can never be true. He can never be overthrown. He don't drop sleep. His power stands. 
and I guarantee you that what seems impossible to you right now, it is 100% possible with God. Let's stand to our feet.